We've got 130 plus CVEs from Microsoft and crickets from Adobe. I don't know. Still a lot to discuss. So let's talk about it on the patch report. Hello, everyone. I'm Dustin Childs, head of threat awareness here at Trend Zero Day Initiative, and our chief patch wrangler here back with the patch report for July 2025, where we talk about the latest and greatest security updates from Microsoft and usually Adobe. But uh, let's get right to that. Adobe has um, crickets. So I put off recording this for a while, but we still have nothing from Adobe. I still expect that at some point, but who knows? Until then, fingers crossed, I suppose. But let's move on to Microsoft because we have plenty to talk about there. 130 new CVEs in your standard components, 140 total when you add in those MITRE and AMD uh, and Chrome third-party CVEs. So a bunch of them, uh, 10 of these new ones are critical. The rest are important in severity. Eight of these came through the ZDI program, including some from Odell in Berlin. Happy to see those finally getting fixed. But let's start about talking about this one that I really find interesting. SPN EGO's, I don't know how you pronounce that, but the EGO X Security Mechanism RCE. This is great. First of all, it's a heat-based buffer overflow. Come on, people, it is 2025. I can't believe we're still having heat-based buffer overflows. Uh, re allows remote, unauthenticated attackers to execute code simply by sending a malicious message to affected servers, which is Windows 10 and above. Uh, there's no user interaction, and since it executes with higher privileges, we're talking about something that's wormable here. And that's really cool. Uh, well, from a researcher perspective, I guess from a defender perspective, maybe not so cool, but hey, this is a really neat bug. Microsoft gives it an exploit index of one, which is their highest rating, meaning they expect exploits within 30 days on this. And uh, I know that there are a lot of exploit shops right there now that are reversing this patch furiously, trying to come up with the latest and greatest exploits. Do not delay on testing and applying this. This is a serious bug and uh, yeah, it could really, really mess up a lot of mechanisms. Like I said, there is uh, Windows 10 Plus because there is a GPO enabled in that version that makes it vulnerable. You can, as a mitigation, disable that GPO as a temporary mitigation, but do not rely on that alone to protect yourselves. Maybe disable that GPO while you go out and test and deploy. But then once it's deployed, you still need to test and deploy this update. Next up, we have a bug in Microsoft SQL Server, it's RCE. And speaking of heat-based overflows, we've got another one here. And look, SQL admins or SQL admins, I don't care how you say it, um, you're gonna have a time. And, and, and I call this one out second, not just because this is a very severe bug and this is a very severe bug, but servicing this is not gonna be easy especially if you're running your own app or you've got a third party app that's affected by this, you're going to have to manually update the Microsoft OLEDB driver to 18 or 19. And that goes for all of the uh, SQL bugs in this month's patch, just about all of them. So you'll see in the table below, there'll be a little cross by that that lets you know that there's something else you need to do. So mm -hmm. this is an interesting bug because again, you could just send uh, context, especially crafted message to an affected SQL server and get code execution, but that's not really the, the badness. The badness is really the servicing. And that's that's why I say, oof, man, I feel for you. I've been there and it's tough. Next up, we have a bug straight from Pwn to Own Berlin. And this was a SharePoint bug used by Viatel Cybersecurity, not anonymous, as they say. Uh, just let's side point here. There are several Pwn to Own Berlin bugs in this month's release. I won't call them all out, but Microsoft in their CVSS lists them as exploit code unproven. Microsoft, we handed you exploit code. It is proven, case in point. So uh, SharePoint, this was two bugs and this bug requires authentication on its own. However, it was paired with another bug that you'll see down in the spoofing section where they spoofed an authenticated source and were able to communicate with the SharePoint server. It's really cool. And that's why I tell people, if you think you're just hiding bugs behind authentication, that's a bad place to hide them. You can't just put a bug behind auth and think, oh, well now it's post auth and it doesn't matter because breaking auth and, and getting around auth is very easy for the very sophisticated hackers that are out there, especially those that come to 
Oh no. So very interesting one on this one. And finally, this is one of four office bugs that are critical rated, and they're all rated critical for the same thing. Uh, and that's because the preview pane is an attack vector. Again, this is the third month in a row where we've had critical rated office bugs with a preview pane attack vector. Now this tells me one of two things, either the patches are not good and they're being easily bypassed, or there's a whole lot of these bugs that somebody has just stumbled upon and they're just churning out bug after bug after bug. I don't know which one of those is true, could be either way, uh, but if you're using Mac, which I am, uh, we're out of luck because the patches for Mac Office, not out, not out yet. There once was a time where you had to release everything at once or it got held. Not anymore, Mac users just kind of get stuck. So uh, yeah, if you're using a Mac, maybe disable preview pane for a while. I, I, I'm literally considering that myself because there's so many problems and because there are no updates for my system. So uh, it's not an entirely recommendation, but it's just something that you may consider on your own. Uh, here is the table. You'll see it is very long this month. 140 CVEs total that we are documenting. Like I said, 130 new CVEs and then the 10 that are third-party CVEs. Only one is publicly known and it's one of the SQL Server information disclosure bugs. Um, let's scroll down here finally to eventually get to the other critical bugs. Ah, here we are, yes. So also I did want to point out uh, Chromium patched uh, Chrome last week. Uh, and it was under active tack. So if you have not updated your Chrome, please do so if that is your browser of choice. So there's only three other critical class bugs. The first is in Hyper-V, uh, allows code execution a local system, requires a user to import an INF file. I really don't think that's a very uh, likely scenario. There's a bug in Windows KDC proxy service. And again, not very likely to me, these cryptographic bugs tend to be incredibly hard to exploit. Uh, but very interesting from an esoteric point of view. Um, and finally, there's a critical rated info disclosure bug, but when it says what info is disclosed, it just says heat memory, which is usually only important. There's no information on why this random heat memory leak is critical. Uh, I don't understand it, but I verified this morning that yes, yes, it is still rated critical. Um, I don't know what to do about that. I, I expect it to change. There's a bunch of other RCE bugs. A lot of them are open and own, uh, especially in Office, where a preview pane is not an attack vector. So in these cases, you're gonna get some sort of file, whether it be a spreadsheet, a Word doc, blah, 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 you open it, they get code execution, if they can get by smart screen or the other things. There's an interesting uh, SQL injection bug uh, in Intune. I call that out because Intune is usually used to manage a bunch of other systems. So. That could be an asymmetric type of attack. I don't think it really is gonna get exploited in the wild though. We'll see. Um, there's some virtual hard drive bugs which require a user to mount a virtual hard drive, which is, who's who's mounting these virtual hard drives from, from unsavory sources? I don't, I wanna meet these people. Uh, I really do and just say, why? Why did you do that? Um, there's a few other ones, none are really that critical. There's so many EOP bugs. There's more than 50 of them this month. And, and that's just a lot. The vast majority of them just lead to system or admin uh, or you know something along those lines, just elevated privileges. There are a couple that will lead to a sandbox escape. There are some that go from a low to medium uh, integrity. Uh, there's nothing that really stands out uh, to me. Uh, the Azure Fabric runtime doesn't really stand out because you have to do a bunch of extra steps just to get to system. Uh, and, and that's all there is there. Security feature bypass bugs. Guess what, BitLocker? Guess what you're bypassing, BitLocker? That's the joke. Um, yeah, you also have a smart screen bug from my colleague, Simon Zuckerbron, that allows you to bypass smart screen. Uh, and there's a remote desktop licensing bug that's really interesting to me because there's very little detail in the bulletin about it. It does require a machine in the middle attack, but Microsoft doesn't make it clear what security feature is actually being bypassed. <clears throat> and in Windows licensing, I'm not even sure what security feature you would have. I don't know. Uh, information disclosure bugs, we've got a, quite a few of them this month, but they are boring. Congratulations. Uh, the vast majority of them just lead to unspecified memory contents, heap contents, kernel, whatever. Uh, 
very useful in exploiting stuff, uh, but not very interesting to talk about. Um, see the SQL Server again. You've got manual work to do uh, again. SQL admins. So sorry. The only two really exceptions here are there's a GDI bug that can disclose sensitive information. I, I don't know what sensitive information is. And then there's one in the cryptographic service that just Microsoft says allows the attacker to disclose information over a network. Well, okay, that, that's informative. Speaking of informative, denial of service bugs, my monthly soapbox. Please tell us more. Uh, Windows Performance Recorder, uh, that requires an authentic attacker, authenticated attacker to create directories and then have an admin run the executable for the first time. That's the extra details we got, and it's like ridiculous. I don't see that happening. I'm actually a little surprised they even fixed that bug uh, in a service update, but a uh, security update, but good for them. <sighs> spoofing bugs, we are actually spoofing something real this time and I can talk about it. One is in SQL Server, um, that, uh, you know, no, SharePoint bug that allowed Viatel to bypass authentication and remote desktop. It's gonna require some social engineering. Um, and then uh, that's about it. The storage bug could be used by an attacker to connect to a, an attacker control resource, which is interesting, uh, I guess. I don't know how that one would manifest. That's pretty interesting where if you can convince somebody to click a link, you're gonna have them attached to your network resource, your whether it be an SMB share or, or something else, pretty cool. And then there's tampering, which is a little, it's poorly defined, uh, the tampering category. But in this case, you've got the Windows State Repository API server, allows an app container escape to delete specific files on a uh, system. So I, I suppose that's tampering. That, that one is actually pretty good and no more advisories. So that is it for July. Um, I will update the blog in case Adobe ever does update. Uh, but other than that, uh, I hope to see you at Hacker Summer Camp. I will be in Las Vegas for both Black Hat and DEF CON, uh, especially at the booth where we will be celebrating 20 years of the Zero Day Initiative. So please swing by and say hello. I like it when people say hello. And if I survive that, I will be back here August 12th uh, for our next scheduled update. Hopefully Adobe will join us then. And uh, if not, uh, hope you get all of those patches tested and deployed and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.